In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord's Sermon on the Mount, which we have been hearing at Holy Mass recently, is all about teaching us how to be followers of Christ, how to be his disciples, and it is full of ethical demands on how we should live. We all remember our Lord's words on lust, warning us in impure temptations and the way we respond to them will be a salvation issue for each one of us. If a man looks at a woman lustfully, he commits adultery with her in his heart. But in concentrating on the issue of purity, which is really easy, a really easy thing to get obsessed with worrying about, rightfully so maybe, it's easy to ignore the other big salvation issue, which the Lord talks about in this great passage in St. Matthew's Holy Gospel. Purity is an immense battleground for us inhabiting what is basically a pagan culture. But in our serious attempts to keep free from bad thoughts and of repenting of impure stuff in confession, it's important we don't forget that there are other areas, other areas that we need conversion in, other things we need God's help to be freed from. One of these things which our Lord speaks very forcefully about is the vice of anger. A few weeks back in the Gospels, our Lord went so far as to warn his disciples that if they spoke to their brothers with cutting and cursing remarks, that they would have to answer for it in hell fire. They are the actual words of our Lord. He says, in hell fire. So this is serious. This is stuff we all need to be picking up on. Jesus is warning us about grudges, unforgiveness, backbiting, calumny, all those sins which arise from anger. Sins that we all get tempted by at home, at work, driving the car, in the shops, even at mass, basically all the time. Today's readings linger on this theme of the danger of anger. But this week, the temperature of that anger has heated up. It's now hatred. Our Lord talks about hatred also in this Sermon on the Mount. So I want to look at anger in this sermon. What it is, when it's necessary and godly. And then finally, how can we can respond to the destructive impulse of anger when we feel it rising up inside of us? First of all, by itself, the emotion of anger is not a sin. You might be thinking, how does that square with what you just said? But honestly, it does. Anger is a passion, and in itself, passions are neither good nor bad. They become good when we follow them at the appropriate time and in the appropriate measure. And they become sinful when we use them at inappropriate times and to disproportionate measures. That's why St. Paul can tell us in the Ephesians, in your anger, do not sin. Anger has a time and a place. We see anger being used without sin in the beautiful and sinless life of our Lord when he pushes over the tables of the salesmen who have turned the holy place of God into some kind of marketplace. And we read in the Psalms about how God has anger against the sinner and how he threatens him to repent lest he end up separated from him forever. But the anger of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his almighty Father is always a pure and sinless anger, not disproportionate not sullied by pride or self-assertion. It is an anger that is completely from love of justice and hatred of evil. For us, on the other hand, anger is almost always something we have to be wary of. St. James tells us, My beloved brothers, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For a man's anger does not lead to action which God regards as righteous. He's saying that anger doesn't tend to make us holy, and instead it tends towards self-righteousness, pride, and animosities. And even when it comes to the necessary and important duties of correcting and disciplining your children, your strong correcting words and actions must flow from love. Those strict punishments must be grounded in a desire to bring about virtue and goodness rather than from any kind of impulse to revenge. I want to repeat that verse from St. James. For a man's anger does not lead to action, 
which God regards as righteous. Anger does not bring about righteousness. I think that is key. You don't get righteous acts flowing from someone who's consumed with anger. So here's the first bit of advice from scripture. When you feel the emotions of anger stirring up, you need to start putting a strong limit on all of your actions. That's because anger is like arming yourself with a great axe. Something like, like you'd see in the Lord of the Rings. Now you've got that axe. An axe that on rare occasions is something that's going to be needed if something really dangerous attacks you. But generally speaking, using the axe to do household chores will do more harm than good. Acting under anger is like swatting flies with an axe. It leaves a path of damage and destruction. What's the alternative? Here's a second piece of advice from the word of God. We read in the Psalm, Psalm 4 verse 4. Be angry but do not sin. Ponder on your bed and be still. So that has got to be what we try and do instead. This isn't the same thing as what you might call the NASA technique. Counting down backwards from 10 and then blast off. No, what, what the Bible is calling us to do in that silence is to try and ponder how strongly our use of anger offends our holy God who we belong to. Who has brought us out of slavery to be, sin to be his own possession. I read about a preacher this week who had a big anger problem. I read that he got so angry with something or other that he punched a wall and he broke the diamond ring that his wife had brought him. But he managed to conquer anger by pondering in God's word in moments of temptation. He would silently repeat to himself the words of St. Paul to the Colossians that read, But now put off all these things from you, anger, fury, wickedness, blasphemy, and filthy language. He memorized that verse, and in moments of difficulty, he would just repeat the first part of the verse, but now put off from you all these things. And he conquered the passion that was a really big part of his disordered personality. It's a bit like if a doctor tells you, from now on, you've got to put off from alcohol or sugar saturated fat if you want to be healthy you do it and you remind yourself of his words in moments of any wavering god is telling us to put off from anger fury wickedness blasphemy and filthy language he's telling us that these things are bad for us i'm sure they're not even just bad for our souls they're probably bad for our emotional and psychological well-being too not to mention the peace of the family home, probably our bodies, probably our blood pressure. And now just one final piece of advice from the word of God on anger. That comes from Romans 12 verse 19. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. We need to let those moments of anger be occasions for making an act of faith. An act of faith that God will settle the score. The worst kind of drawn out and protracted anger is so gnawing because you know that in fact you are in the right. That's what makes the anger so hard to shift. It chews up inside. It cries out, I have been wronged. This is unjust. And in those situations, God is telling you, my child, I saw what they did and I hate it too. But my child, do not take revenge. Trust that I will settle this for you. So here is the challenge. In occasions of fierce anger, will you entrust the vengeance to God? Will you hand over the issue to him? Are you willing to trust in God's promise to you? Will you take his word? And that's what our Lord did upon the cross. He didn't get angry at those crucifying him, at those who scourged or betrayed him. He offered the injustice to his father for him to deal with with justly and fairly, and at the right time. Our Lord conquered his anger with love and forgiveness, and with a certainty that the Father sees everything and records it all. Learn from our Lord, our example, in all the trials of life, the one who says to us, Learn from me, 
for I am meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.